3,436 miles. So I think my oil life monitor is at about 58% or so. So I've still got a long ways to go on this initial oil cycle. But check this out. And I've got the engine oil fill cap off too to let it all trickle down. The truck's been sitting here for probably 15 or 20 minutes. I want you to check this out. Look at that. Come on, camera focus. Camera's not going to help us out any, but there's no oil hardly at all showing up on this stick. You can see a little bit right there at the tip. Just a little bit of oil. So this thing is already low on oil at 3,400 miles. And the other Eco Diesel I had, you know, it was a Gen 3 engine also. I checked it religiously at about 2,500 miles. It was looking like this. The oil would barely touch the bottom of the dipstick. So just FYI, if you buy a new Eco Diesel, the first oil change, they seem like they burn some oil. I guess it takes a little while for the rings to seat properly. Um, so that first 5,000, 6,000 miles that you own one of these new Eco Diesels, you need to keep a really close eye on your oil level. Check it every week. And um, you know, you'll probably find that you have to top it off before you get to that first change. But my experience was that after that, you know, after you do that first oil cycle, it seems like it really levels off and doesn't hardly burn any oil at all after that. So you just gotta keep an eye on it when it's new. So let's talk about windshields again. So everybody says that these windshields are fragile, they break all the time. It's not a matter of if it's gonna break, it's a matter of when, on and on and on. Um, that's another one of those things that I've never experienced. I had a YJ Wrangler, I had a JK Wrangler, I had another JK Wrangler when the Pentastar engine came out, I had a JL Wrangler, and I've had two of these JTs and not a single one of them ever had a broken windshield not once and you can see this windshield is still flawless as well now we have a rock quarry right down the road dump trucks pulling out on the highway all the time we live out on gravel roads you know uh, i drive interstates and freeways sometimes there's a four lane highway i take every day to work you know so i'm out in the world just like you guys are and I've never had one of these windshields break. So I really don't know what that's all about. I'm not sure what guys are doing to break these things so often, but you know, it's not really an issue if you ask me. Now, what is an issue is bugs. This thing, because of its vertical nature, it catches a lot of bugs. And I decided to do something that I haven't tried before on a Jeep, and that is one of these bug deflectors. Now, I'm kind of, you know, not a huge fan of them because of the way they look. You know, they don't look the best. But I'm gonna try this. I'm curious, you know, I wanna see if this thing really does reduce the amount of bugs that hit the windshield. Um, I just got it installed a minute ago, and to be honest with you, it's a little bit of a pain. So I'm gonna kinda show you what you gotta do to get this on. By the way, the one that I got is the AVS Bug Flector 2. I really love these marketing names. I always get a good chuckle out of that bug flector. <laughs> it's really cool. Anyway, uh, Mopar makes one of these, but the thing about it is it's like $120. And a lot of reviews, believe it or not, state that the Mopar one does not fit very well. Uh, like the hardware doesn't match up well with the provisions in the hood, which is kind of strange. Normally you buy the Mopar stuff because it fits really good but everybody says the Mopar ones are a pain to install and they're twice the money. This one, about 60 bucks, half the price. Uh, got it from Amazon, but you can get these a lot of different places and you can see that it is listed for the Jeep Gladiator. So the first thing that I did was I test fitted it. I just kind of held it up there with my fingers, tried to make sure it was perfectly even side to side. And then I took some painter's tape and marked the sender um, of the grill right there or where the center of it would be the camera kind of makes it look a little bit off but it's actually kind of centered um, so that's the first thing you want to do is just kind of hold it up there and make sure that it's going to look and fit the way that you want before you go any farther and then as far as installation goes you have 
first of all, you can see this ridge right here, this uh, impression. See how it's molded to kind of line up with the hood? See that? And it's not perfect, but it does have a little bit of impression there that kind of lays in that groove in the hood. So you want to line that up with that groove in the hood. And then you can peel back a little bit of tape. There's some 3M double-sided tape that's pre-installed on this. You peel back just a little bit of it so that you can stick it up there. Uh, and then you're gonna do that on both sides. There's one over here too. And like I said, just peel back a little bit of the tape so you can stick it just so it'll hold. And then you can drop the, t the hood down really slowly and do some more testing. Make sure it's gonna clear your hood latches. You know, make sure everything is gonna work okay. Uh, take some measurements, check it out side to side, so forth and so on, because that's really, really strong tape. And once you stick it on there, it's gonna be on there. So once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and, you know, you've got a little bit of that red film hanging out. So once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and pull the rest of the tape off or the film that's over the tape off and then stick the rest of it on there. Now, they also give you, as you can see, some optional screws. You don't have to use these, but I decided to go ahead and put them in there because even after I stuck this on the hood, and by the way, they give you alcohol wipes to clean everything down with, which I also used. Uh, but even so, once I stuck it on there, it seemed like it was a little bit wobbly and I just didn't really trust it. So I went ahead and ran those screws in. They're included in the kit, self-tapping screws. They're really short. Uh, this is a double walled you know, area of the hood, so you don't have to worry about going through the top of your hood. Uh, not gonna be a problem. I noticed that even though they're self-tapping screws, the easiest thing to do and the thing that works the best is to get a small drill bit, drill some pilot holes, and then use a manual screwdriver to run those in. Because this first one I tried to do with an electric screwdriver and it went through too fast and stripped out. Uh, you don't wanna over tighten these. So it's actually a little bit loose. So on the other three, I just drilled a really small pilot hole and then I used a manual screwdriver to run it in. That way I was able to snug them down and get them real tight. So with those four screws and the double-sided tape, now it's not gonna go anywhere. And now I can remove my um, tape up there that I used to mark the center with. So that's pretty much what there is as far as installation on the bottom of the hood. Now up here on the top side, the instructions tell you to take these little, what they call bump-ons. See if I can get in here and see one. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see. You can kind of see that one over there. See it right up in here. So they give you four of those to put in there. And what that does is if you're going down the road and something does hit it, a rock or something like that, or if it's just really windy, and it presses this down against your hood, it won't scratch the hood because those little rubber stoppers that they call bump-ons will take up the slack and protect your hood. Uh, now the instructions tell you to put those on your hood, but what I did, obviously, as you can see, is I put them up on the bug flector. Um, there's a couple more over there too, that you can see up under there. See them? Focus camera, there you go. So anyway, uh, I preferred to put those on the bug flector itself. I didn't want anything on the painted finish. Um, so that's obviously a, an option and it's gonna provide the same function. Shouldn't be an issue. And you can see that the hood latches still work just fine. I mean, it's close, but they work just fine. I saw some reviews on Amazon that said that the hood latches would make contact and they were in the way or this thing was in the way of them. Not so, there's still probably a half inch there on both sides. You know, it's just a matter of how you line this thing up. You've got to get that, that lower portion up in that groove, you know, that it's molded for. You got to get it in there and you have to make sure it's perfectly straight side to side. And if you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. Now, honestly, I don't think it looks all that terrible. I mean, it's not, great but it doesn't look all that bad and if it protects the hood and especially the windshield from getting bugs and you know let's say road debris gravel whatever uh, then it will pay for itself very very quickly so pretty much just like any other thing in life there's pros and cons to everything right so there's certain things you have to keep in mind with these in the winter time if you get ice and snow you're probably going to get a little bit of ice and snow down between the bug flector and your hood could be an issue might not be 
Uh, so just keep that in mind. I have a garage, thankfully, that I park in most of the time in the winter, so I shouldn't have any issues with that. So it's just something to think about. Um, in really cold weather, you know, like if you live up in the northern tier of the country or Canada where it's well below zero, uh, these things sometimes can become brittle. Um, so something else you got to keep an eye on. But uh, for the most part, they seem to hold up pretty well, you know, and usually you don't have a lot of trouble with them. Um, so it's just a mod that's kind of functional, you know, it, it's one of those things that you know, I would rather kind of not have to use, but you know, like I said, it's one of those things that's uh, unfortunately on a vehicle like this kind of a necessary evil because I, I get really tired of having those bugs all over the windshield. The other night, uh, my buddy and I, we went down to Nolan Lake, about an hour and 45 minute drive one way. On the way back that night, you know, it's a hot summer night, bugs are smacking the windshield constantly hour and 45 on the road. By the time I got home, there were so many bugs on the windshield that no joke, I almost couldn't see through it. And it gets to the point where it, you know, the wipers can't handle it anymore. You know, you can put the, uh, the wipers on and spray your washer fluid on there and it just kind of smears the bugs and it makes it actually worse. And then the headlights from oncoming traffic end up glaring and it's just a mess. I get really tired of having that many bugs on the, on the uh, windshield. So, you know, if this thing prevents that or at least reduces it, it'll be worth its money, you know? So anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you that little mod there. I know a lot of people have been kind of asking about those types of things to try and mitigate the stuff hitting the windshield. We'll see, you know, I'll run this thing for a while. It's still summertime and uh, I'll let you know if it works, if it actually does what it's advertised to do, you know, I'll let you know pretty soon. So stay tuned guys. Uh, for now, I gotta go get some more work done. So we'll talk to you later.